Hey, this is The Daily Overpass. My name is Eric and I make apps. Now today, let's talk about the 80-20 rule and momentum. Okay, so the other day I was talking with one of the software developers about a bug that we were having. So it's in the beginning of this project, we testing everything out on Android and we did a quick early test on iOS and we see that there's a few issues on there, something with audio not playing. So, so I was testing it out and we spent about an hour, maybe even two hours trying to find out what the issue was and in the end I had to say, look, actually let's table this for now because I don't want to lose momentum on the project, right? Momentum is something that I think about a lot and it's a lot of the times if you if you lose momentum when you're working on code, as a software developer you know this, if you lose momentum everything just slows down and you, momentum is such a rare thing that when you get it you want to hold on to it, right? This is one of the reasons why as software developers we always find ourselves saying things like hey, it's dark outside already. Or like we realize we've had to go to the bathroom for the last five hours, but we haven't gotten up because we don't want to leave the keyboard because we're in the flow state and everything's going, right? Sometimes you guys ask me about the Pareto principle or the 80-20 rule and whether or not I believe in it. And I definitely do. I think in software projects especially, the 80-20 rule is in full effect. You, have, you get 80% of the project done with 20% of the effort. This is where you have, you know, you're building everything out, you're getting the structure and everything. And if you slow down for one of those little bugs, you can lose momentum early on, right? You, because you could build 80% in that short amount of time. And, but the thing is, you also have that 80% of effort to go into follow 20% of things, bugs and stuff like that. This is the reason why you should never take on a project that, from somebody else when they say, hey, it's 90% of the way done, can you just finish it for me? Because that, nine, that 10%, that estimated 10% is gonna take 80% of the effort and they're just gonna get upset with you anyway. And this is also one of the reasons why I think that live coding demos work, right? I'm always amazed when I watch a live coding demo where somebody goes, they pr build out an entire application in an hour and they do it really well with Firebase or whatever, or Flutter or whatever, and you think, wow, how can they do that in an hour and my developers take you know, four weeks or six weeks to, to develop this application? And a lot of it is because in those live coding situations, it, it only works on one device, you know, there's not error handled, a lot of things are just, you know, they're just, they're quickly thrown up, which is the kind of stuff you could do if you have the right momentum. Momentum is something I think about all the time. And that's why I think, I'd be interested to hear what you guys think about this, but I think developers working in an office environment don't work as well as a developer working at home because a developer working at home can control the distractions for the most part. If they have small kids, not so much, but uh, in an office environment, you have meetings, you have phone calls, you have people stopping by just to say, hey, and sometimes when you're in the zone, you need to stay in the zone. So anyway, that's just my thoughts for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Do you think, first of all, do you think that an office is a good place for a developer to work? Do you think it's preferable to work in an office? Because I've never really found that to be the case. And, uh, and you know, when, how often do you get momentum and, uh, and do you believe in the 80-20 rule? Anyway, that's it for today. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.